Thank you for joining me today. My name is Liz Herzl and I'm the 4-H educator in Ottawa County. Today we're going to be talking about something called the Jog Poop Initiative, which I think is a really good metaphor um, for what it means to be a good role model. So we're really going to reflect on what kind of characteristics a role model um, has and in the way they act, um, which is one of our camp counselor core competencies. So before we begin, you should have two worksheets, and I want you to pull out the first worksheet that has a tree and a soccer field on it. So first, I want you to think about what makes a good team. Um, um, you've probably heard the phrase before that together everyone achieves more. So let's think about, just do a little self-reflection um, of, of what a good teammate looks like and how important it is that everyone on the team works together. So let's kind of keep that in the back of our mind as we get started here. So this presentation is based on a story called the Dog Poop Initiative. As you can see, it's a true story written by Kirk Weisler. So I'm gonna read that to you. So here we go. A man walking his dog, a squirrel climbing his tree. Something's about to happen. Let's look and see. A man whistles with an innocent look on his face. The dog sniffs around, finding just the right place. The man looks away. The squirrel covers his eyes. while well, the dog delivers a smelly surprise. The two walk away, leaving a big pile of poo. The squirrel plugs his nose, not sure what to do. The stinky pile that they leave behind will soon be on everyone's mind. But will anyone in a group take the initiative and clean up this poop? Let's watch and see. Soon the soccer kids arrive to play. It's the first two teams to play that day. Gross, it's dog poop, they point and they shout. Every, everyone seems willing to point it out. The game begins and they play for a while. With luck and great effort, they avoid the pile. As the next two teams arrive later that day, the pointers point and warn where not to play. The coach and the ref discuss what to do to keep the kids out of the poo. Coach says, it won't be easy kids, I know, but we'll need to watch out where we go. From that poopy pile, we must stay away, but let's have fun, come on, let's play. There was more than one close call, sometimes a shoe, sometimes the ball. Parents would yell or coach would shout, kick the ball, score the goal, have fun, and watch out. So far, all we've seen are lots of pointers and a pooper. But what about initiative? Where are the leaders and the scoopers? A coach and a player, a father and a son. They may change the score before the day is done. The pointers see the problem, and as all pointers do, they point, then blame, and whine a bit, and give some coaching too, for they see themselves as experts now on how to avoid the poo. Without so much as the blink of an eye, this coaching dad passed the pointers by. Then finding something to use as a scoop, he went over and cleaned up the poop. His son watched closely. Life is full of people who are pointers and they're only scoring zeros. The players who take the initiative are the winners and the heroes. The scoopers take initiative and are the ones who lead the way. They make the field a better place for all the rest to play. They don't waste time pointing, complaining, or worrying who's to blame. They simply do what must be done and then get on with the game. The next day at school. It doesn't matter where it came from or who put it there. What matters is the leader we became when the leader we become when we decide to care. When we remember that initiative is just what leaders do, when we remember their example and then we can do it too. The example of our initiative may help others more closely see the kind of person and even hero that we can choose to be. So I want you to just take a second, pause the video if you want, and think about the story. What did you think of it? 
I thought it was a pretty good illustration um, of different types of personalities and what it takes to be the leader and step up and take initiative. So do a little self-reflection for a minute. Are you a pooper, a scooper, a pointer, or a hero? So a pooper sometimes is the one that creates the mess. A scooper takes the initiative to clean it up. A pointer just stares at it and acts like someone else is gonna take care of the problem. And the hero always steps in um, to really step up and be that role model that others aspire to be. So have you ever been on a team with those different types of personalities? Like a pooper, a scooper, a pointer, or a hero? So let's talk about this in terms of camp. So let's talk about the different types of poo you might experience at camp. So piles of camp poo, we're gonna call it poo for referring to the different types of obstacles or challenges that counselors might find themselves facing. So pause the video for a second and I want you to brainstorm for a little bit different types of challenges that you might encounter while you're at camp. So I created some examples here. A couple of things I thought of were homesick campers, bullying, bad camper hygiene, bad weather, and a camper injury. So these are all different types of things that we hope don't happen at camp, but a lot of times end up happening. So these are different challenges we have to overcome as counselors and figure out how we're gonna handle these situations. So for the purposes of this lesson, we're gonna use a homesick camper as, um, as the example for the rest of the time. So once you've chosen what your pile of poo will be, I want you to write that down on the worksheet and really think about that specific um, obstacle or challenge um, for the rest of, of the lesson. So what is a pointer? We kind of talked about this already, but I want you to really think about it yourself. What is a pointer? It's someone who just points at the problem, right, and isn't planning to take care of it? So how do you feel when this happens? Have you ever worked in a group where there's a pointer? What happens when someone turns their back on a situation or the rest of the group? So pause the video and take a second to think about what being a pointer looks like with your specific pile of poo. So remember, it's that specific challenge you experience at camp. So in this example, when we're talking about homesick campers, um, the pointer would be a counselor who complains to the adult staff or maybe another counselor um, that one of their campers is not participating in an activity. So all they're doing is just pointing out the problem, but they're not really fixing it. So let's talk about what a close call might look like. We talked about in the story how um, when the kids almost ran over the pile of poop or the soccer ball almost hit the poop, those were close calls, right? So what would be a close call with your specific camp challenge? So pause the video again and think about that and write it down on your worksheet. So with the homesick camper example, the close call would be that the camper has stopped participating in all activities and wants to go home. So let's talk about what being a scooper looks like. Can you remember what we talked about um, with what a scooper does? What are those action steps you have to take to solve the problem? So in, when we're talking about this specific camp example, I want you to pause the video again and really think about what the action steps would need to be to take care of that specific camp problem or challenge and then ask if there might be any barriers to stop you from scooping. So how can you go about scooping your pile of poop? Again, pause the video and write this down. And if you have a partner or someone with you, this would be a great chance to share what you guys have, have thought or come up with. So when we're talking about the homesick camper, again, um, an action step that a counselor could take would be to talk to the camper about what's wrong and try to get him or her in an, involved in an activity that they'll enjoy. So one of these barriers that might stop them from completing um, the, the action step is maybe this camper is really obstinate and just doesn't want to participate. So I think one of those opportunities you have as a counselor is to sit down with the kid and um, just try to form that relationship. Make, let them know that you're there for them to be a friend 
um, and talk about some of the things the camper enjoys. So maybe if they, they say that they like playing Gaga ball, maybe you figure out a way to, to go um, get them involved with Gaga ball or whatever their favorite activity might be. So what does taking initiative look like? This is, we're talking about winning the game here. So what does that look like at camp? How can you be the hero at camp? So remember how the little boy watched his father pick up the poo, and then the next day at school, he took initiative and solved the problem before it really became a big problem. So what does this look like if we could act before a problem really arose? What does taking initiative and being proactive look like? How can you be the hero at camp and be the best team player on your counselor group? So pause the video again, and I want you to reflect on what this looks like and fill out your worksheet. So for talking about homesick campers again, I think winning the game would be a counselor taking a very proactive approach. So on the first day of camp, you work really hard to establish relationships with your campers, get to know them, get to know their interests, and make sure everybody's having a fun time right off the bat. So I think this would really prevent any feelings of homesickness, especially if you can connect them with a friend or get them involved with somebody that they're comfortable with. Um, hopefully they start having fun right away and don't think about home. So I think really being proactive is going to be the answer. So thank you for joining me um, with this presentation. I hope that was helpful.